Hey guys, welcome to Line of Sight. I'm really excited today. This is a bit of a departure from our normal uh, routine where we would be out chasing some woodland creature in some far flung location. We're here with Gallo and Johnny from Blue Collar Angling and they've been gracious enough to invite us to go out onto the Detroit River and hit the uh, walleye run. So this is something I've never experienced. These guys are gonna show us the ropes. I'm really excited to get started. Stick with us and we'll get you some fish on the, in the deck here. My son Chris and I were thrilled at the opportunity to share a boat with TikTok fishing legends, Blue Collar Angler. Right, so what we're going to want to do here on the drift is, um, of course, you want to find bottom. In order to really get onto the fish, you want to keep that line as vertical as possible. That's where the trolling motor comes into play. And what we're going to do is we're going to find bottom, which of course you'll feel with the tap. Once you feel that tap, that's bottom, and you're just going to raise up ever so slightly. We want to be raising up about, I would say, 10 to 12 inches off bottom right now. As we can see from the screen, they're hunkered on bottom. Once they see the presentation, uh, they'll usually hit it on the, on the rise or sometimes on the fall. On the fall, it's very important that you control that line. Don't just let it free fall because you won't feel the tap. When you feel the tap, remember, hook sets are free. Oh, yeah. Set the hook and, and on we are. So uh, here, I'll give you this back and we're gonna see if Chris can get, get on his first Detroit River walleye. <laughs> Typically, how long are you holding it on the raise before you drop it back down? Well, the cadence, believe it or not, it's almost like it changes day to day. Um, when, I, when I'm pausing, I usually hold it for about a second or two. So I raise, you just miss one? Miss a tap. There yeah. you go. So what, I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll raise, I'll pause for about a second or two and control the drop. If I find in about half an hour, 40 minutes, if me and Johnny are not connecting with as many fish as we want to connect, I'll change the cadence and I'll make it a more aggressive. Up, down, up, down. And of course, every drop, you tap that bottom. Okay guys, uh, so of course I'm keeping a continuous eye on that screen and we're trying to pinpoint uh, not only where they're schooling but also the bigger fish and what it seems to, the, what seems to be the pattern this morning is that as soon as we go into the teens, 18, 19, it's completely flat bottom. We're not marking any bait, which is always important. We're not marking any hooks. So right now we just pushed off a shelf. We're in 33 feet of water and uh, Anthony, if you take a look at the screen, you can see the action on there. They're obviously staging in the 25 to 35 foot range right now. So that's the water column that we're gonna choose to target to uh, you know, put some fish in the boat. For today, it is a little bit windy. The currents are gonna be stronger. We'll either run a three quarter or a one ounce jig. Today we've opted to go with the one ounce jig. Uh, we're gonna try this new tactical bait it is a Gobi profile, and the one very important thing, especially when the water is still cold, is you want to use a stinger hook, which we have here, and we're going to also tip with a live minnow. We find that the terminal tackle that's tipped with a live minnow produces a lot more fish than just a plastic this time of year. So all day today we will be tipping live minnows, and uh, the screen is looking very, very nice. We are marking some big fish. Now the question is, can we get them? Keeping it, just keeping it tight. See him raising those. Yeah, yeah. There keeping it go. tight to bottom? Yeah, keeping it tight to bottom. This is a nice fish, Johnny. On the pink. On that pink lemonade. All right, Chris, bring up your line. Which Chris is, buddy? We gotta put him on the pink. What color? Beauty, is look at that one. That's a nice fish. Well, so that's that little, that's that male class right there in here waiting for the spawning females to come in. That right there tells us that we're going to have a great fishery for many years to come. Awesome. Back he goes. Closed captioning in today's episode is brought to you by Canuck. All right. Here we go. Another beauty. Oh. Oh. Look at that. There we go. That's all right. Look at. 
There's a good one. Yes, sir. Another eater. Another eater. Beautiful. He's got it. Buddy. You got your jig hand strong. I do now. Just barely on oh. In the sore arm on the DR. <laughs> hey, that's what that's what the blue collar does every day on TikTok. Like this, eh, Gallo? Yeah, buddy. Strong arm. That's you need that arm. out here when you fish with Gallo. <laughs> oh, he raised with another fish, too. That's a beautiful fish, Johnny. Guys, welcome to the Detroit River. That's a beautiful fish. That's a good one. That's a beautiful female right there. So these are coming in to spawn. You can see the belly on her, chock full of eggs. So we'll get her back into the water. Come in, you jump right in the net. net. There's a little male. Uh, that one was actually on the stinger hook, and he, when he, I felt him swipe, he got hit underneath. If you don't get him right in the mouth and you get him underneath, they usually tend to feel bigger than they are. Uh, but there you go. If you guys are looking for uh, the good, good eaters, that's the perfect size right there. Uh, usually around 18 to 20 inches. So that one. Yeah, we can put them in the box and uh, get back to it. fish and he said they'll match the uh, they're gonna match the water they're in which makes perfect sense I'm nor I'm used to these northern walleyes that have the real vivid stripes and everything like that but these guys don't have that it's a really cool uh, it's a really cool fish though that's, that's a great, a great eat. that's a great eater right? how did it hit Anthony pretty good it hit that... pretty pretty hard I, I felt it immediately there was no uh, you know no worrying about uh, you know the, the light light tap tap you know he actually you he knew he was good. on yeah I knew he was on right away perfect this portion of today's episode is brought to you by Bergera our barrels make the difference Hitter. another one another one oh, double header oh okay Johnny got that net Johnny boy gallows on this side. That's and why we keep two nets on the boat. That's why yeah. we keep two nets <laughs> on the boat. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Couple uh, of nice eaters. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. Good eaters. That one hit like a freight train, even though it's not a very big fish. Yeah. But I think these are going in the box. Yeah. yeah. 
with the wind today. It's uh, definitely a little tricky trying to keep those lines vertical, but that is definitely the key in trying to get into these fish today. Is uh, keeping the lines as vertical as possible. Thank you, Chris. Came off in the net. Yep. Beautiful eating size. Gallo and Johnny's knowledge of the water and the appropriate tackle kept us in the action the entire time we were on the river. Again, another little yeah. Detroit River Jack. Beauty. Here we are. Beauty. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a big male right there. Yeah. Well, non stop action on the Detroit River. Another male. Just getting lots of these males today here on the Detroit River. That's a good eater. That's a hat trick. <laughs> Alright guys, so as you can probably see from behind us, it's getting very choppy. Uh, we're just about to call it a day, but we're going to see if we can, if we can, uh, oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, right on cue. <laughs> nice. The males are definitely in here. It's the females that we're trying to do. Probably one of the smaller jacks of the day. But, uh, small Detroit River walleye. Definitely the smallest of the day. Uh, and we'll let this little guy go. It's rough out there, but the guy's got us on fish. These guys know where the fish are. They know uh, how to get us on the fish, and they know the technique to use to get the fish to, to bite. So thanks a lot, guys. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. The weather's supposed to be better. I don't know how you can get much better than this, really. <laughs> this segment is brought to you by Excalibur Crossbows. Different for a reason. Chilly this morning, but it's the uh, it's the start of day two, and we're going to see if we can catch some bigger fish. Yesterday, uh, every fish except one was a male. One female in the, in the batch, 
Uh, so today we're going to see if we can find some of these big females out here on the Detroit River. On day two, we were joined by Andy Cordero of Extreme Sport Fishing Charters. Did you flip that bale, Johnny? What's that? Did you flip that bale when you that's one oh, right. trick that I like? Yeah. So when we get the fish in the net, one trick that we like to do, put the tension on the on the fish and on the net, you get excited and everything, that hook could pop free at any time, and that hook goes flying into somebody's face. These guys showed us a good trick to flip the bale. As soon as you get that fish in the net, flip the bale. And you have no slack, you have no tension, or you have no tension, you have no uh, danger, and the hook's gonna stay where it is. Not, well, not that trick. Not only does it alleviate a safety concern of that hook popping out with tension on the line, but it'll also save uh, your rod tip from potentially yes. snapping with all that pressure. So remember guys, when you net a fish, open your bale. If you're running spinning gear, or engage the bale on a bait caster, once the fish is in the net. Feisty. Um, not a big female, but uh, definitely a good fish. this hump there's there's one structure right around us and it seems like they're just they're collecting in there triple header on these beautiful walleye would put a smile on any angler's face. Personal best? 
Oh, for walleye? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that's awesome, I'm saving! Hey. So that's my personal best walleye. I'm not a big walleye fisherman. That's, that's a big walleye. That's a big about how to fish this Detroit River and how to fish walleye in general. I can't thank you guys enough. Be sure to tune in next week for more exciting hunting and possibly fishing action right here on Line of Sight TV.